Facebook world, it's Jamie here at the Outdoor Learning Center and I am so excited to see everybody. Remember that if you are watching us live, make sure you put in the comments who is here and where you're from. Um, we're going to be talking about turtles today, so if you have anything you are wondering about turtles, I can do my best to answer your question. Um, I also want to remind you that if you're watching it on the replay, so either on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel, uh, if you post a comment, we can respond to your comments. So make sure you share our posts. Uh, we'd love to meet and see more people. Sorry about my dark glasses. I was just outside on this beautiful sunny day, which today is the perfect topic to talk about it because we're talking about turtles, like I mentioned. And turtles are starting to get ready to come out of their cold winter hibernation and start looking for the sunshine. So we're gonna watch a video um, and hopefully you guys can see it and hear it. If you are watching the live, let us know if you're not able to hear it. Next turtle fact. Did you know turtles love the water and spend most of their time there? This is actually the major difference between turtles and tortoises. Turtles spend most of their time in the water, and tortoises spend most of their time on land. Now, sometimes people get these animals confused because they look very similar, and they're from the same family, but they are different because of where they spend most of their time. Turtles spend most of their time in the water. Tortoises spend most of their time on land. Look at this amazing sea turtle. All turtles spend most of their time in the water, but none as much as sea turtles. Sea turtles are all about the water. But you know, even sea turtles spend a little bit of time on land. In fact, female sea turtles lay eggs on the shore, and the baby sea turtles make their way to the water once they hatch. It's interesting, baby turtles are called hatchlings. That's right, hatchlings. That's such a cute name, and they look so cute. Hatchlings are so adorable. But notice, you know, their mother's not helping them. That's because turtles, remember, are not social animals, okay? They don't really interact with one another that much, and so they're kind of left on their own. That Sweet. Oh. Next turtle fact. Did you know turtles love the water and spend Technology. most of their time? Come on. There we go. There we go. So <clears throat> turtles are among the oldest living reptiles. The first turtle species were alive during the Jurassic period. I know it's going forward. It's like it's by itself. <laughs> there you go. Whew. <laughs> I think I hit play. Lesson learned. Anyway, so <laughs> turtles were actually around on the earth when the dinosaurs were. That's what Jurassic period means. They lived everywhere except for Antarctica and the North Pole. And maybe if you guys are thinking about it, you might think to yourself, what's unique about Antarctica and the North Pole and why might turtles not want to live there? Uh, it's pretty cold there. Anyway, they can live in many different climates. So there are more than 300 species of turtles in the world. And some simple facts about turtles is that they can live on land and water, but they spend most of their time in the water. I'll let you guys know you are going to get to meet some turtles up close and personal here pretty soon, and we're going to show you uh, what makes them unique and why they might want to live in water most of the time. I'm going to say hi to Stephanie who is watching. Thanks for joining us, Stephanie. Um, so most turtles leave the water only to bask which is kind of like when you guys sunbathe and lay on your lawn chairs by the pool. Um, and it's so they can get warm and to lay eggs. There are many different types of turtles in the U.S. Most turtles in the world are though found in North America and Asia. So this slide shows the turtles that are native to Western United States, which is our part of the world. Um, there are two turtles in this picture that are native to Washington. And maybe if you guys have been out near ponds or lakes, you have seen some native turtles. Are there anybody want to guess which ones are native to Washington before I give you a hint? So if you're watching this in the replay, make sure you plug in what you were thinking before I hit click. <laughs> the two native turtles in this picture are the Western Pond Turtle 
and the painted turtle, two of our favorites. Um, over on the west side of the state, which is that way, towards Seattle, um, you can commonly find leatherback turtles in the ocean, which are a totally different turtle species. Uh, leatherback turtles are the largest turtle in the world. And if you think about Finding Nemo, you guys have all seen those big, huge turtles on Finding Nemo. That's kind of what they're talking about. They can be over six feet long and weigh up to 1,500 pounds. And I have a horse, and it doesn't even weigh 1,500 pounds. So you can imagine how big they are. Uh, that's about the weight of 100 bowling balls, which I don't know about you guys. If you pick up a bowling ball, they're pretty heavy. Even though there are only three native species in Washington, there are several invasive turtle species. We'll talk more about them towards the end of our presentation. So now we're going to go over anatomy. Um, anatomy is studying the, bar the parts and pieces of the turtle. Uh, and what makes a turtle a turtle? A lot of times people call tortoises turtles and turtles tortoises. So I want to tell you what is different than a tortoise. Um, if you guys want to, you can put some comments into the, the, the chat to tell us what you guys are noticing different. But uh, turtles and tortoises. So if you look at them comparatively in these two pictures, Tortoises have legs that will walk on land, and when we show you our turtle in a little bit, you'll notice that they have flippers that allows them to be able to swim really well. Uh, they also have a beak, which makes really good, kind of like teeth for chewing. Um, obviously, they both have mouths and tongues. Um, their skin is scaly, and they both have scaly skin. And this is a carapace, the top shell of the tortoise. And oh, Lily, will you grab me the one that we have, because I want to show that. And then turtles have a super cute tail, which I didn't know if you guys would know that tur turtles' tails are super cute. But I am going to show you uh, the turtles up close, like I promised. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you guys, because I get a lot of questions from kids about turtles' backbones. It's kind of dusty. But this is a turtle shell that we had donated to us. Sometimes they get hit by cars. I'm not exactly sure what happened to it. But it's really crazy. Turtles cannot take off their shell. Everyone's like, oh, it's like a, a hermit crab. They can take off their shell. But if their shell comes off, they essentially die. If you look at this shell here, this is their backbone. So it's connected to their shell. So if they took this thing off, they'd basically take their backbone off. So they cannot take this off. And hello, Rebecca. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to put that down. Sorry for bumping this. They both have eyeballs, which is pretty exciting. Um, and you guys might notice that their neck has this kind of stretchy piece, and I don't think it's... Anyway, this neck piece here allows them to put their head out really far, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. But they also can pull their head all the way in. That's their defense mechanism. Uh, it allows them... There are things that like to eat turtles. In fact, some owls like to eat turtles. So it allows them to pull everything in. Also, these guys, as, no, as much as they live in the water and these guys live on land, they don't actually drink a lot of water. So they can actually pull themselves in to kind of conserve water in case it's uh, a dry or a drought. And I think I talked about all the parts. Did I miss anything? So we have three turtles here at the OLC. Um, Tiffany's going to be bringing those to us. If, if you guys know your rock stars or bands, uh, one of them is named Ringo and one is named Star. And then we also have Aldo Leopold, who was a nature writer. We call him Leo. Um, if you guys go to a pet store, you can buy turtles at the pet store, but they are not native. So I'm going to show you guys Ringo and Star first. Oh, I lied. I'm going to show you Leo first. So Leo is not one that you could actually get at the pet store. Am I on a delay? Okay, so I'm going to hold this up here and show you Leo. I think I can go like this. Sorry for the switching here, guys. The hope is that he does not pee on me, but if he pees on me, you guys can laugh. So this is Leo. He's actually one of those native turtles I was talking about. Um, he's a western pond turtle. You will notice the side of his head has yellow stripes. And when I show you guys Ringo and Star, I want you to remember what color of stripe Leo had. But those are his eyes we're talking about. His head is super streamlined, kind of like we talked about eagles and hawks have an aerodynamic shape. 
So he has an aerodynamic head, which allows him to swim through the water really easily. And then we talked about those webbed feet and claws. So these guys actually like to feed on the bottom of ponds and lakes. They'll dig down in the mud and they can use their flippers to swim down there. And you guys can see that little yellow piece of skin between his feet. That's actually his flipper. I'm sure you guys have worn flippers in the pool and you'll notice that you're a much better and faster swimmer when you use flippers. He uses those claws, like I mentioned, to rip up plants, eat lots of insects. But the cool thing I want to show you about Leo is his shell. And you can see why he is called a painted turtle because his shell is gorgeous. And this is all natural. No one comes and paints his shell. He was born this way. Um, it's beautiful red and yellow. I hope you guys are picking this up on camera. So, and I'll show you his back, his carapace here. And we talked about how that's part of his backbone. And then of course, I gotta show you that my favorite part of the turtle is their tail. Their little tails are so cute. I don't know why I think that. I think porcupine feet are cute too. So Leo, his story is this. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. But in the video, they talked about it being a hatchling, they're called, right? Hatchlings are what turtles are called. Thanks, Lily. Um, Leo was a baby, cute, super, super cute turtle. And somebody saw him all alone. And he was tiny, like the size of a quarter. And they thought that he had been abandoned by his parents. And abandoned is a word that mammals use. Like usually mammals have to stay with their parent because they're nursing their young. But many animals, like these little turtles here, when their parents, once they lay their eggs, their parents will leave them. They'll leave the eggs. The eggs hatch on their own. They don't have to be warned by their parents. And then people see this sweet, cute little turtle and think, oh my gosh, it's been abandoned and I have to rescue it. Well, the unfortunate story is they rescued Leo and kept him at their house. And unfortunately, Leo never learned how to take care of himself. So how to catch fish or find the bugs or where to live. And so Leo was, uh, Fish and Wildlife uh, talked to the people and they actually brought him to us. And so Leo will live here forever and teach people about the importance of leaving wildlife where they are. So remember that if you see a sweet, cute little tortoise like Leo, and it's all alone, that is the way nature expects it to be. So this is our native painted tom pond turtle. And I have Ringo here. Did I forget something? Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Sorry. Sweet. I'm going to talk about more painted. Should I talk about more? Sweet. Okay. <laughs> oh, I got to go back to my... <laughs> You guys are here for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to talk. Oh, was I not supposed to talk about them then? No, but it's oh, okay. Lily. <laughs> Poor Lily. That's why Tiffany was like, what are you talking about? Uh, so painted pond turtles, they're native to <laughs> Washington State. Oh, you love me. Um, <laughs> they're found in all sorts of ponds and lakes. Like I mentioned, they have the red belly. That's beautiful. Now they're the most widespread one in North America. So if you see a turtle around our neck of the woods, it's probably one of these guys. Um, they all go all the way to North Mex Mexico, to Atlantis, the Pacific Ocean. And painted turtles like to eat small insects and plants, like I mentioned. He's making our camera zoom. I'm gonna go down. Whew, we're gonna make it through it. Um, do we, okay, we'll talk, we're gonna talk about painted pond turtles and invasive stuff in just a little bit. So the other turtles that we have here, I'm going to go back to, look at me. So these are red-eared sliders. Uh, red-eared sliders are not native. So they are not originally from here, but unfortunately they're found all across the state in different lakes and ponds. Um, they're actually native to southeastern United States, so other side of the continental divide, um, as you can see on this map. Look at Lily's like, oh my goodness. So this red spot here, um, you guys will notice their head looks a little bit different than Leo. Remember I mentioned that he had the yellow stripes? A red-eared slider, as you can tell, has a red mark right by where their ear would be. Hi, Maddie. Thanks for joining. Um, they, have, they come in different colors, brown, gray, uh, black. 
They'll eat everything from small insects to plants to fish to other turtles. Dun, dun, dun. And they are actually a predator to the native turtles in Washington State. So I'm going to show you Ringo. We'll call it Ringo. And the first thing you guys might notice is his size. So he is a lot bigger than uh, Leo. He's been here for a long time. I think we probably had him for about 15 years. That's my guess right now here on the slide, on the fly. Um, you'll see his belly is missing that kind of orangish red color. He does have the webbed feet like Leo did. And he does have yellowish stripes like Leo. But, whew, he does have these really interesting red stripes right behind his ears. Oh, he's got super sharp claws, you guys. I hope you know I'm getting scratched for you. There is his eyes. And you can see that fold of skin on his neck. That's so he can really reach his head out if he's digging through weeds in the pond and looking for small uh, insects or fish. And he has huge flipper feet. He's trying to swim right now, and I'm really hoping he does not pee on me. You guys might want to keep watching just in case for that fact. Um, and then, of course, we all know my favorite piece of anatomy on the turtle is their little tail. Aren't their tails cute? So these guys are pretty big. Um, they live a pretty cushy life. They get fed every day here. They don't have to go hunt for things. Um, but this is probably about as big as they will get full grown. And this is Ringo. Okay, I'm going to switch my slide here. And then that's a picture of both of them together. We actually used to have them housed together. This is an interesting fact. Um, when we first opened, we really wanted to have some live animals for people to see. And so we went to the pet store and we bought Ringo and Star um, because they were cute and little. We thought that would be a great thing to have here. In the 20 years we've been here, we've discovered that they take a lot of care. So I would not necessarily recommend getting a turtle as a pet, especially if they're not native to here. But in the last year or so, they started fighting because they're becoming teenagers and they started attacking each other and causing harm. So we actually had to separate them and create a whole other uh, home for them. They take a heat lamp, a UVB light, lots of different food, some enrichment stuff. So don't get a turtle as a pet or call me on the phone if you think you want to get one. So there are three species of turtles that are, in, are invasive to Washington. So if you guys might think of something called invading, it's like dun dun dun, we've been invaded. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So red-eared sliders are not the only ones in Washington state. Um, that are na not native. The spiny soft shell turtle and snapping turtles are also found in Washington. And a lot of people ask me about snapping turtles, but these are not native to our state. They're native to Eastern and Southern United States. We mentioned before with the map. All these turtles living in Washington because they were released into the wild by people that did not want them anymore. So, um, I talked about going to the pet store and purchasing. Um, you know, we've had them for 15 years, like I mentioned. They could live 20, 25 years. If I, even older sometimes, if I get it as a kid and all of a sudden I'm going to college or an adult and I don't want my turtle anymore, People think, oh, well, I'm just going to go let it go in the lake because that's where it belongs. But it does not belong here in Washington. And unfortunately, because somebody gets sick of them, they think they're doing the turtle a favor and letting it go. But basically, these turtles are taking over the homes of all of our native turtles. And I mentioned before that they will actually eat other turtles. So the higher their numbers go up, the lower the native numbers go up. Um, there's actually a research study at the Woodland Park Zoo that I hear about. And painted pond turtles are actually the babies are the favorite fo food of a bullfrog. And if you guys have heard of bullfrogs, they are not native. And we're going to watch a video about it in a little bit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So uh, we mentioned before, don't let them go. They're competition, but they can also eat the babies. Oh, my goodness. I mentioned all this. 
Take a walk so around watch many a video. of Seattle's lakes and ponds and you just might see them. Turtles. Washington State is filled with turtles, basking on logs and soaking up the summer sun. But most of them aren't ours. The turtles we see most often ruling our local waters are former pets, discarded by irresponsible owners. That has made it nearly impossible to catch a glimpse of Puget Sound's only native freshwater turtle, the endangered western pond turtle. Pond turtles need wetlands and wetlands need pond turtles. By 1990, only 150 western pond turtles survived in Washington, losing ground to those non-local turtles, predators, disease, and disappearing wetlands. In the race against extinction, the western pond turtle was falling behind. That's when Woodland Park Zoo decided to give these turtles a head start. For 25 years, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife biologists have been collecting western pond turtle eggs and bringing them here to Woodland Park Zoo. Hatched in safety, they spend the first most vulnerable months of their lives under the care of our zookeepers. They grow up without the threat of predators, like invasive bullfrogs. Once large enough to avoid becoming an easy snack, they're ready to be returned to the wild. And then instinct kicks in. In 25 years, additional partners have joined Woodland Park Zoo, and together we've given more than 2,000 turtles a head start. The last two wild populations have been saved from extinction in Washington State, while four new populations are up and running. Able to live over 50 years, it could take quite a while before western pond turtles are back to full strength. But if turtles have taught us anything, slow and steady can win the race. about that video uh, because we had done a lot of stuff with Woodland Park Zoo we actually met the scientists that were raising the turtles when we first opened this place and my favorite part of that story was it started with an older couple that loved to hike at this pond and just by going to the pond every day during different seasons they noticed as just natural citizens out there hiking that their western pond turtle numbers were going down and they noticed that there were more bullfrogs so they actually just in their own adult scientist brains noticed something happening and made a call and started this project so you can go hiking and notice something different in your favorite hiking place and make a difference so it's really important that you pay attention to what's going on so I hope that you guys enjoyed learning about turtles today. Please remember, spread the word. A turtle and a tortoise are two different things. Usually you'll see turtles in the water with webbed feet and tortoises crawling around on land with more like upright legs. So don't call a turtle a tortoise and don't call a tortoise a turtle. That's the biggest message um, you can help us spread. And if you do have a pet, please don't let it go into wild lakes and ponds. Uh, and if you ever think you might want to have a pet turtle, give us a call. Um, we can talk you out of it or educate you more about uh, different options for you guys. So love seeing you every Friday and we will see you next week. Remember, share this video and um, make sure more people know about what the Outdoor Learning Center is doing. Bye.